Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. My name is Michael Ajay and I am the CEO and founder of the Inside Job Academy. And I would like to welcome you all to It's an Inside Job with Michael Ajay. And we have an absolutely incredible special guest um, that is going to blow us away and with her incredible story. I'd like to welcome everyone to this live. Welcome, welcome. Please make sure that you share this live because it's going to be incredible. We're going to jump straight. Welcome to every single person who is here. Wow, wow, wow. Emma, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Been looking forward to this conversation. Um, so we're going to get straight into it um, so that we can get the most out of your story. Now, Emma, you went literally um, from... <laughs> Before I did, let me, let me give a little background. Let me give a little bio to Amma now. Amma Amorje is um, the plant made founder, entrepreneur who literally started on a shoestring budget. Um, after being fired from her job during the COVID shutdown, Amma um, Amorje started her business, believe it or not, with only 150 pounds. She now runs a successful eight-figure business, dropping hair and beard growth products globally. Now featured in numerous mainstream publications like Business Insider and Vogue, Amma's story was so compelling. She caught the attention of the BBC which culminated her into her own documentary called Beauty Boss. Her organic approach to launching and scaling her business is sure to inspire you, wherever you may be on your entrepreneurial journey, to reach deep within and believe in the gifting God has given you to step out, establish yourself, and succeed in business. Now, Emma, you went from being fired from your job during COVID, which is considered to be one of the worst times to lose a job. <laughs> Literally everything was uncertain. People didn't really know what to do. You know, the world was in chaos. People didn't know whether they were going and coming. Um, and literally were tightening their belts. But you started a global brand with only 150 pounds in your mom's kitchen. Now, my first question, straight off the cuff, was what was going through your mind at the time? And what caused you to make that step into your entrepreneurial journey? Can you walk us through the beginning part of your journey? Yeah, um, obviously, thank you for having me on. Um, it's a pleasure. Obviously, Michael's one of my guys, like, so inspirational, so it's amazing. Um, but, yeah, so... The thing is, when, when I was in uni, I was studying to become a psychiatrist. So I was trying to be a full-blown doctor. I think you've heard this story mm. before. <laughs> mm. uh, and uh, yeah, it wasn't really cutting out. I was just looking at the mm. of time you had to study and also just dealing in the mental health field every single day. I was like, oh, am I cut out for this? I don't know. Um, mm. so my brother gave me a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I read mm. it. I was like, whoa, like I didn't even know there was an option because I, I didn't grow up with exposure to different careers or anything like that. It was just like very limited career paths and I didn't want to be a full-blown doctor. I didn't want to be a nurse. I didn't want to be an engineer or whatnot. So I was like, okay, well, I like helping people and I like the mental health field or the psychology field. So let me see if, you know, this is for me. Mm. obviously it wasn't so I was like well let me see if I can start a business but I think um marketing is going to be a big part of that the funny thing is I didn't know anything about marketing I don't know why I even said that but I guess marketing is so prevalent that it's ingrained in every single one of us so I was like oh I must learn marketing then if I'm gonna have a business mm. and then I was like well isn't marketing a business itself 
So there was people who were helping other people market their businesses and stuff. And, we, and I was like, oh, well, let me try and, you know, run an agency. So let me now start reaching out to people and seeing if I can help them with their marketing. So um, I, in uni, was picking up people, you know, so, you know entrepreneurs at, at uni with their clothing brands and stuff. I was helping them out. And I can't lie, I was doing pretty well. Um, graduated uni made sure I would never step foot in a job. So I was working like run around jobs, trying to market for people, including Michael, actually. <laughs> I did work <laughs> with Michael for a hot second, um, mm. which was fun. Um, but it seemed like there was something, like it didn't, it didn't necessarily skyrocket and I wasn't actually quite sure why. So then mm. my mom was like, well, this thing ain't working out. Why don't you get a job? Go a job. <sighs> The funny thing is the first day I, I stepped a foot into the job, I literally told myself, it feels like I'm betraying myself. I felt like I was betraying mm -hmm. myself because I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to have my own business. I wanted to start something and blow something up, but just things weren't working out. Mm -hmm. so, fast forward to six months and yeah, they, them lot, they lot kicked me out. <laughs> like, <laughs> they just full blown kicked me out. Like it was insane how it all went down. I was literally getting so stressed out because I was trying to do so well at the job and I was having like literally panic attacks and stuff because of the overwhelming amount of work I, I was doing, but I wasn't seeing much result. So I always had this thing of like doing things, but like not seeing any results. Mm. And then basically the day after I was signed off from um, the doctor to take some time off after having a panic attack is the day they kicked me out. <laughs> like they literally, the morning no way. Off, literally 10 minutes in i got called and that was it like i didn't even start the work day as soon as i was yeah they kicked me out straight away i said wow people are wicked <laughs> <laughs> people are very very wicked um, so yeah then covid and i was like wow that's this is crazy but i almost like i think because there was so much happening it's almost like i couldn't even be negative everything already was negative so I wanted to find some hope and I was like, do you know what? Let me see. This is a crazy time. But let me see if what I want to do can bang right. Mm. I didn't know why. I didn't have any inclination, but I was seeing, because um, I was still following a lot of business stuff along this whole time. And I could see health businesses blowing up, beauty businesses mm. blowing up in this like crazy time. But I was also seeing other businesses go down. So like things mm. like... Well, a lot of things, to be honest. So, like, cars, stationery, all of this stuff, like, going down. But I was seeing the trend, and I was like, ooh, okay. So, the funny thing is, I, was, I started the business not even in mind of plant made, like, hair and beard growth. I was actually thinking of a completely other niche. I was thinking of making a men's skincare brand. Mm. So, I was working on something else. And then I, w I ended up trying to solve my own issues because I had really bad alopecia. I uh, had bold spots all over my head. And I was mm. about my own issues. I'm now sharing my story on my, my personal Instagram with barely any followers. And literally, the reason why I started the business is because someone asked me, oh, could I buy that random thing you made on Instagram? That is how the business started. Wow, wow. Wait, before, before we, <laughs> before we, 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 we move on to how the business started. So you're saying to me that, you know, your goal when you first started this journey of life was to be a doctor. Yep. Now, tell me, what, what was the reason you chose doctor? Was there any particular reason around that? No. <laughs> there was no love in it. There was no passion in it. It was just like, mm, I'm kind of interested in people. I don't want to be a medical doctor, but I like, you know, people. So I was like, and I was really intuitive. Um, with psychology and stuff and as I was learning I was like oh I really like this and I knew I could become a psychologist if I studied like six to eight years so I was like let's just go for that then because I'm not interested in anything else mm, and you, you just quickly changed your mind like there was no passion behind it and I just quick, quickly fizzled out mm -hmm. so it was it was from then that you then decided that you wanted it to work from yourself it was it yeah. was it from there yeah so at that point had you had you had a job before that before so i was literally in uni so i was working like really crappy jobs like just to make ends meet um mm. I, 
have a lot of money coming in. I didn't have a lot of student loan because, um, yeah, I was messed around. I got the least um, amount of money. So I was like... What, what, what hey, were some of these crappy know. jobs? Let's go down memory name. What's some of these crappy <laughs> jobs that you got yourself involved in? Oh my in? gosh, my uni jobs were mad. So I worked at a stadium. I was doing like events. I was doing catering and stuff. Then um, I was doing like barista work. I was working in offices. I even was a cleaner mm -hmm. at one point. I also worked in a hotel. I turned over beds. I cleaned sheets. I was. I did anything I could to make money. I. Mm. I did a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff that people thought they were above. But yeah. I was like, hey, I gotta make money. And even throughout when I was a failing entrepreneur, I was still doing like I was still turning over beds and doing hospitality. Like. Yeah. Mm. And that was just just to make kind of ends meet. Really, you were willing to do what it takes just to keep your head above water. That part, yeah. all of these jobs was it just making was it just reaffirming that you don't want to work for someone this is just <laughs> you know just this is just for now i'm just yeah. like literally it was just reaffirming the fact that that's not what you want to do yeah so even the craziest part is when i worked in a hotel um the the hotel i worked at it was the hotel that Meghan marco stayed in the night before her wedding so it's wow. like the most one of the most prestigious hotels in ascot it's like really high end like no two rooms are the same it's like wow. it's a stunning hotel and like i'm i'm also trying to like do a whole thing where i stay there i pay for a few nights there to kind of like commemorate what i've achieved mm. Mm. and now i'm sleeping in it that kind of thing um <laughs> but <laughs> so what, 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 did that, what did that mean to you when, when you were actually doing that what what was you what was kind of going through your head you know, when you were actually kind of staying in this hotel um, that you were in. Oh, I mean, I haven't done it yet, but um, when I oh no, I'm saying I'm saying when you were when you were oh, there, did you say you were? Yeah. <laughs> Mate, um, I was like, wow, people got money. <laughs> it's like, mm. hey, this money is crazy. Like, but it's just like the environment, the feeling of wealth, just like that kind of elevation. It was just like, wow, there's just so much more to life. And don't get twisted, like mm. money is everything, but like the final things are like, damn, they're nice. I can't even lie. They're nice. Like, they're, they're nice. nice. <laughs> they're very nice. The I thing is, like, hey, I need some of that. <laughs> I remember when I was working for um, a, a kind of like a hospitality company. Yeah. But what we had to do was kind of serve welcome drinks. So we were all black. We served the welcome drinks. We just stand there like a butler, just serve the drinks, then go and get the food. You have to put it down in a particular way. And the type of events that we used to get sent to do is on parts of London that I never even knew existed. Yeah. Like they would have like a museum that at night would turn into this like gala event. And like you said, being around that, that sort of environment, you know, it just, <laughs> it just makes you think like, uh, someone who is who used to work with me is laughing. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it makes you it makes you recognize that there's levels. Yeah. A, A, AYS, that's right. That's that was the company. It makes you it makes you feel that there's there are levels to life. Yeah. You know, and you kind of have to decide. You know what side that you kind of want to be on. So you said now you've got this job and you've had this panic attack. Now talk me through. You know what led to this to this panic attack. 100%, 100%. Um, so basically, well, the first day I was brought in, um, I, so I used to work in recruitment. And um, when it came to the business that I was working at, they had, so uh, let me paint the picture. So they had different markets almost. So like everyone was recruiting for different roles, for different things. And then they had um, location-based um, divisions of that as well. So people could be doing the same thing, but in a different location. Um, mm. So basically, I w they told me firsthand, they were like, by the way, this is the hardest one. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, this is the hardest market, but like, you'll be fine. And I was like, what? Like, okay, <laughs> why, am I, why did you guys decide I should get the hardest one? And then with recruitment, so usually there's like two problems. So they see that you don't have enough people and not, not enough good people to recruit or there's not. Mm. I had both. So not only did I barely have anyone, I also barely had any jobs. So I was like, how was this even going to work anyway? So they had like protocols and all this stuff. And 
yeah, it worked for most people because most people had like slightly one edge over the other. Mm. Um, me and a f the few people that were doing our market, they had to do very unorthodox things, it had to go against protocol. But because I was new, I had to go with the protocol. So it was almost mm. like this fight of like, I'm doing everything you're asking, but it's not working. So, and I was being very proactive. I was asking like questions. I was trying to tell them like, this ain't working. What else can I do? I was actually really trying. And it was yeah. so good my personality because I'm, I'm a very timid person. But like, I was like, hey, it's work. Let me get the work done. Let me show myself yeah. it's a good, good sport. Yeah. It wasn't working mm. out. And then I was like, oh, there were talks of the directors talking about me. And I was like, what's going on here? Like, I'm, and by the way, every time I'd had a, a review, it was never negative. Until the time I was fired. That was the one time I heard anything negative. <laughs> wow. So I never heard, like, it was always just like, yeah, you know, you're trying your best. You're, so, you know, we'll figure something out. But, like, you're actually putting in the work. So it's not you. Mm. Something yeah. that's not you. But then it became me. <laughs> 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 so yeah it was that whole thing of like putting in so much effort and work and not seeing any results mm. that was the weirdest thing to me because it was such a recurring thing in my life and yeah it just got to a point especially with the whole talk of the the directors and stuff it was just like nah i was just getting really anxious and really mm. panic, like something i haven't dealt with in my life before so it was wow. so mad and that was the first time you've, you've ever had a panic attack yep Wow, wow. And then you said, it was on that day you said you got fired? No, so the thing is, I'd actually addressed it. I, I told um, I told my manager and my sales coach um, that it happened. Because I just wanted to be transparent. And I wasn't to say that it was a weak thing. Um, and there were women as well, so I was hoping they'd understand. And even my manager said that she used to have them too. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. So, you know, you can kind of help me through this. I was just trying to be, yeah. you know transparent but <laughs> i don't think people like me <laughs> can be transparent in those places um mm -hmm. then i got signed off for work um but the funny thing is even whilst i was signed off for a week i came into work in the middle of the work week because i had meetings but and i was like i'm still gonna go to them because i'm gonna show them that i'm like i'm gonna do this even though i've been signed off by my doctor yeah and i came back after being signed off 40 minutes and i was like and you was out the door. I was out. What's going through your mind? I was like, these little... I was <laughs> like, wow, you lot are fake. I was like, nah. Like, mm -hmm. I was so shocked. I just had never seen anything like that before. Um, because the words of encouragement, the fact that I was doing everything I needed to do, the new management I had towards the end of um, my career there, all of that just... It was almost like they were just still trying to push that it was a knee problem. I felt like yeah. I was doing what I needed to do. It, they didn't train me right, or those unorthodox practices needed to be done in order to get mm -hmm. you know, those roles. But mm -hmm. it was almost like you had to pay by the book or you had to get out. Um, yeah, I, I was a little salty until this day, like because I, I still work near there and I still have friends there. I'm not yeah. there. like I'm not. I don't know you lot no more. Like, I don't. The people <laughs> I know, they know. They know I know. They know. But I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, no, I hear you. You know, and, and it can be just literally an emotional roller coaster because you're, this is you really trying to do everything that you can to kind of make ends meet. Um, and, you know, right now your, your mental health is being impacted, you know, because again in back of your mind you don't even want to work a job in the first place but you're here trying your best to make it happen you know you you experience a, a breakdown unlike anything before you're being transparent and open even get signed off you come back and you literally you know um are sent out the door you know it's 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 it's, it's insane an insane journey because you know there's a lot of people out there that are kind of going through a similar turmoil. You know, they're, 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 they're frustrated. They're trying their best. Some have even been trying to look for jobs and they can't. Um, and you've just been made redundant. So this is when now you've gone into your marketing business, right? No, 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 no. Marketing. I was doing marketing before it. Oh, before during. it? Dur before and during. <laughs> and during. Yeah. So now, what's your first thing now? Kind of turn more towards that or you're now trying to look for another job? 
Um, so I was recommended <laughs> by my mum um, to try and get another job <laughs> during the midst of like everyone being sacked and put on furlough. I was like, I don't think this is going to work out. I, if I yeah. do anything for myself right now, then it's game over. I, I, it's almost like I, I didn't see another job happening. I didn't see that happening. Mm. Um, so, mm. and I was like, the marketing thing, like it was cool marketing for other people, but maybe it's just the thing that will really take me off is just doing it for myself. Um, yeah. So I was like, yeah, let me just start my own business. Let me just start my own brand. Wow. I hear you. So you're somewhat unconventional, right? Um, in your movements. Like you stated on your IG account <laughs> that I wake up at different times every day of the week. Um, I still found huge success in my life because I wanted to set a different kind of foundation. A foundation built on doing the right things every day that actually move my life forward. So I want you to move us through your day and how we can glean from these principles of, of how you flow. Okay, so I want to preface this and say like, okay, so I used to be the person like for probably two years who read the books, who, you know, looked at the productivity hacks or did all of that. And stuff wasn't happening. I was just like, why? I'm reading the books, though. Like, I'm doing the hacks. But it's like, until... So there was this co concept of moving the needle that came to me. I was like, whoa, this has changed everything. So moving the needle is literally just... It's not about what you do. No, it's not about you doing things. It's about what you do. And mm -hmm. if that thing doesn't move you to your, you know, the next goal, the next... A milestone then it's a waste of time or mm. it's not in line with what you actually want so mm. me waking up at 5 a.m every single day which i tried to do i i have not been doing i wake up mm. sometimes at five sometimes at six sometimes at seven five um <laughs> i you know but like imagine if i went to the gym i'm still going to the gym regardless of the time i'm going Mm, mm. that's moving me forward the going to the gym is moving me forward right mm. um so people almost like mask certain things and yeah. um it has to happen like i have to wake up at five i have to get a coffee in in 15 minutes go for a walk and all this stuff but those can happen multiple times a day like it's not married to this time because not everyone is the same so not everyone's gonna mm -hmm. have to have the same schedule instead um why don't you focus on the things that will move your life forward so if it's a fitness goal make sure you get in at least five sessions a week four or five sessions a week make sure you get in some walks in the week if it's a business goal what is making you money and double down on making yourself money not oh the branding this or all that like i mm. my, my is a testament of like i did not start out perfect and I actually am a perfectionist. I am a perfectionist. Well, I'm an ex-perfectionist. Because, <laughs> yeah, I'm not acting like it anymore. But the first releases, like, they went up to par. But I was like, you need to get out. So let mm. it go. And I'll, I'll change it later. I've gone through, like, three rebrands with my business because every, every stage is like, okay, cool. Now we can finally, we have, we have the money. It makes sense now to, to make this nicer. But in the beginning... It's a vanity thing. Your products can look mm. amazing and nice, but if no one's buying them, mm. you're not moving the needle, are you? Mm. I love that. In other words, major in the major things. Some of us are focusing on some of the things that are not really like you described, moving the needle. Just because this set of, you know, um, 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 routine is working for that person, you know, they may have a completely different goal to you. You know, the reason why they're waking up at five is maybe because they're an early bird, you know, maybe because they have to come back and take the kids to school. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do that. In, so kind of have a routine that's kind of focused on the goals that, that and what moves you really is, is, is that in the summary? That's it. That's it right there. So yeah, I've been living my life with that. And it's, it's been helping, I think. <laughs> it's been helping a little bit, a little bit. Now, you, 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 you started, and this is what kind of blows everyone's mind, right? 150 pounds to start your venture. 
with time constraints and obvious, you know, resource challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, what did you do first? You know, how did you multiply this 150 to now an eight figure enterprise? Talk to us. Okay, cool. So basically, as I mentioned earlier, so the story was I was working on, you know, making some concoction to solve my issues. So my brother wanted to grow his beard. I wanted to grow my hair back. And it was the middle of COVID and everyone had time. I especially had time because I had no job. So I was mm. like, okay, let me mix a few things together and see what happens. And within like 10 days, I'm tracking this stuff because I, I, that's what I do anyway. I used to take pictures and videos of my hair, cut my hair, do whatever. Um, and then I was like, 10 days, I was, I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> What's happened? Like, mm. did I, do I see a lot of growth? I've never seen this before in my life. What have I done? Um, wow. So I was like, okay, so I shared it on my personal Instagram. And at the time I had like a thousand followers and it was just people I knew. So, um, yeah. And then some people were asking me, oh, what ingredients did you buy? What did you buy? And I was like, okay, cool. I sent them the, the mega list of ingredients because it was quite a bit. Um, but mm. I knew people could be bothered, but I was just wanted to share it anyway. And then one person was like, oh, like, if I bought it, like, could you make it for me? And I was like, bought? What? I'm broke. <laughs> I have no money right now. <laughs> bought, like, as in buy with your money? Okay, great. That's fine. So <laughs> I'll do that. I was, I was like, yeah, that's fine. So, mm -hmm. and then people, um, so then I was like, oh, maybe someone else might want it. So I just put on my Instagram, hey, this person said they want to buy it. These are my results. Does anyone else want to buy it? I had 100 mm. DMs. I've never had 100 DMs in my life, not even on my birthday, like not even on a special event. Like 100 nice. DMs. Yeah. Look, where can I buy it? Where can I? I said, what? Okay. Let me make a quick makeshift, <laughs> quick makeshift um, website on a, on a, platform called gumroad which is basically just like quick quick website quick things that you can sell it's usually used for like ebooks and stuff but like i was just using it for this because it was cheap and easy um mm. so i did that i set that up and then i had a limited amount so i sold the first batch i think i sold like 50 50 of them for like 10 pound so i just so i sold them uh, well, first and foremost, I found the ingredients in bulk. I found bulk bottles and stuff. No labels, nothing, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's where the £150 came from. Gathering all these things, making um, a bigger batch of the products. And then I sold this 50 for £10. So that's £500 right there. And then so other people were like, oh, like within three, four days, people were posting that they had it. And then within another week, people, well, and within another few days, actually, people already started to say, oh my gosh, like, I'm already seeing results. <laughs> like, my edges are already coming back. And I was like, what? <laughs> In a couple of days? So I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. Something's happening here. And then I was like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. We're going for another round. Um, but this time I put the price up to 15. Um, thankfully, I had a marketing, like, background. Otherwise, like, <laughs> I wouldn't have, I probably would have started for 2p. Um, but... <laughs> Um, I sold the next batch for fifteen pounds, and then I sold another like forty, forty something. Ended up turning a hundred pounds into a grand in ten days. Wow! Yeah. So, <laughs> when when along this journey did you know that you were kind of onto something? Like this could potentially be crazy. So I was just reading the signs, like it was the way people were so responsive, the way that people were seeing such great success in a few days. It was just those things. Um, and also I was working on something that had no money and just something that me just solving my own issue had made, made me a thousand pounds in 10 days. Like I was like, I have to give this up. If it's mm -hmm. crazy, follow the money, follow the money, follow the money. I don't wow. know who said it, but I was like, that was ringing in my head, like, follow the money. I was like, okay, that's where the the success is. It's already apparent. What's the point of forcing something when the market yeah. already, the market had already told me what they wanted. So mm. I just went with that. And in five months, you had made your first 
six figures. Yep. <laughs> Emma, you, 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 you <laughs> had you ever done a job that had made six figures before? Never in my life. No. And you, you've gone from, you know, unemployed, you know, having a breakdown, you know, where you've been sacked. And in, and in, in five months from then, you've cleared six figures from yep. your business. Yep. Now, so many people, when they are starting business, you know, they're like, you know what? I need to get the best website. You know, let me spend three grand on a website. I need to spend another, you know, 3K on a branding of my logo. But, but like you said, your growth, you know, has just been from 150 pounds. Yeah. You know, to where you are right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what advice would you give to the person who is saying, I don't have the time, you know, I don't have the resources right now. You know, what, what advice would you give to them? Like they can't move forward because of that, because of that reason. The thing is, like, the, what the main thing is, is figure out what people want. So there's a lot of people that are doing stuff that people don't want. They're trying to force mm. Mm. They're trying to force an idea. They're trying to force a business that just doesn't, that people don't want. Or, and it's like, you, you're going to be the one to create the demand, you know? And that is, that is like, not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go mm -hmm. market into a problem that's already that already exists and be the solution there and be like, guys, you have a problem like this is this is what I have. This is solving your issue. So the first thing is like make sure your whatever you're pushing is something that people need and people want and people have already been putting their mm -hmm. money. So the funny thing is people always say that competitors are bad. P people hate competitors. People hate them. Actually, the, your competitors are validating. That wow. there's really a market spending there's already people spending massive amounts of money mm -hmm. all you have to do is look at what your competitors are doing what they're not doing right what you could do better and then position it that way so for me i was i looked at the hair market and i said cool everyone's making you know leave-in conditioners and all this stuff it's all cute but like no one's ever said like i'm gonna fix your issue like i have an issue and i'm going to like i'm going to fix it for you like I wow. didn't see any UK brands doing that. And I was like, why is no one doing this? And obviously I knew that that existed because I was in the market too. I was buying yeah. the biggest brands. I didn't see any improvements with them, especially when mm. they started to change their formulas and being bought out by like really big guys. I wasn't seeing anything. So I was like, well, of course. So it was almost like, how did I not see this? How did I not see mm. I How did I not see this? But that also is in my favor because I am the market to this day. I know what people want. It's literally been one of the main major reasons why I've seen success because I don't even have to guess um, what the market want. It's almost like I'm, I'm the voice of the customer, especially wow. with my team and stuff. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. always, it's almost like I have this like, this energy. I know exactly what they want, what they don't want, what they like, what they won't like. So I always move on the community, what they want. That's, that's mm -hmm. been a big driver of success. So I think majorly <laughs> focus on solving problems that exist. As, and I would say problems specifically. It's so much easier to start a business when there's a problem involved than just a bad yeah. thing, something that's quick. Mm -hmm. it's not It's not going to last. Oh, it's going to be really hard for you to break into the people that are already doing that really well. And then the other thing is you don't have to go in with everything. You don't have to go in with all the ideas. You don't have to come in with a business coach. I had no business. I still don't have a business coach. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to come in with everything. You just have to come in with the basics, the fundamentals. Find mm -hmm. a kind of solution to a problem that exists. Find out where they are, where they exist. Are they online? Where are they online? Create content or create messaging to find them and rinse and repeat. Wow. I love that. You know, I think you, you mentioned some very key gems there that I want really people to write these down because you're learning from somebody who has done it and who is doing it. The first thing that you said is that to make sure that what it is that you're doing isn't just a vanity thing. You're not just doing it because, you know, oh, I love to do this thing, but actually make sure there is a market 
there is actually a huge demand for the very problem that you are solving. Um, and another thing that you said was incredible was really about kind of perspective. Because if you change what you look at, what you look at changes. You know, we see competitors as, oh, someone has already done it, you know, because they're there, I can't do it. But you said your competitors are your validation that your market exists, you know. So if there's a, a huge competitor in the field that you want to venture into or you've got a problem that you want to you wanna solve, that is actually a validation to yourself, and then one last thing that you said was, you know, find out where the market is. Find out where these people are and give them value in that space. Listen, Harvard Business School ain't got nothing on you, Emma. <laughs> oh Harvard <laughs> Business School has nothing on you. People pay thousands to learn business and you just broke it down in a few, you know, sentences. My question to you next is, you know, what obstacles... You know, because wherever there's op opportunity, there is challenges. You know, <laughs> life, like Jim Rowe says, you know, life and business is like the seasons. When there's summer, you know, there's autumn. When it's autumn, there's spring, there's winter. That is life, you know. So I definitely know, though you saw a huge opportunity, that there is, there was obstacles. So my question is, what obstacles or fears or doubts have you had to overcome in this journey? I think the first thing was like the obstacle of finding, you know, the time to do everything. So in the first five months, majority of the business was run by me. So I'm marketing, I'm product mm. development, I'm branding, I'm mm. um, customer service, I'm social media manager, I'm content creator, all wow. of me, one person that's it and it was a whole madness like i was staying up until 3 4 a.m making product and then coming labeling all of this stuff whilst i'm doing this and that like it was a lot it was a lot mm -hmm. and the thing is it's important let's say you're, you're at the beginning stages of your business and you're there right now it's like how do i get out of this funny thing is it's almost like i saw a lot of people um so I was looking at people a step ahead of me or two steps ahead. A lot of them still were working on their own or that maybe they had one person. I didn't quite know when to bring on a person full time. So I had one person mm -hmm. help me out um, every now and again when she could because she'd come down from uni. Um, but I didn't know when the next step was. And then it's almost like if I had taken that step a little sooner, seeing how if the money could fit the the person, um, when could I hire them? If if mm -hmm. I could have hired someone in like month three, to be honest, mm -hmm. full time, and to be honest, that would have changed everything. I probably would have made mon more money sooner. So mm -hmm. the first thing was like fear of letting go. Mm -hmm. I let go, and when can I like relieve responsibilities to other people? A lot of like b founders. They want to do everything themselves and they love the self-glory of doing everything themselves. But if you have a mission that's bigger than yourself, you have to realize mm. that it, it takes an army to drive that ship, you know? Mm. It, takes, it takes crew members to drive that ship. So when, like, you need to find a realistic time to, to relieve some of that responsibility and allow, trust someone else to help you build, you know, this, this, this dream so that was the first thing. But then once I did it, I was like, oh my God, why didn't I do this sooner? And I just hired a team. I started to hire a team and I was like, oh my God, I'm so much easier now because I don't have to do everything myself. Um, yeah. So th that was the first thing. I think the second thing was, you know, you can be scared of growth. Um, so you can, you can fear growth, not in terms of your mindset, but more in your actions. So Mm. There are times where I was like, oh, why aren't we growing? Why aren't we growing? And then I realized that I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> so mm. I'm not like going full in into like the really, the, the major growth activities. And maybe it's because, you know, a few customers have said negative things. Um, mm. Okay, well, if these people have said stuff, is anyone else going to be negative to me? 
is this even going to grow then if some people don't like it will anyone else like it going into new market new territory just everything new it's like and growth is new as well when you see new numbers on the dashboard that's new and you're like mm-hmm. oh, what the what's the backlash of that what's the team going to look like what's the operation going to look like so there was times where I was actually holding myself back and I didn't even realize um wow. I was scared of like I was internally scared of that step and messing up so it was almost like it's more comfortable to be where you know mm-hmm. you know what I mean but I've had to end the thing. I'm, I was still dealing with it up until recently, so I've had to battle myself out of that because now I'm going into some serious territory. It, Mercy, <laughs> this ain't a small game anymore. This is serious, serious money being, you know, being made, and it's like, oh, America specifically has been a bit of a fear for me. Not now, no. but in the past because it's new, and it's like, oh, mm. I know what they think, what they how they feel, like. Hair products that are and, and, and Americans are different. They're different. <laughs> they're different. Just... Oh my god! They're so they're so quick to cut you down. Like, woo! And when it comes to hair, they don't like to spend too much. This and that, but they got a bunch of problems. And I'm like, I have the solution, you know. So mm-hmm. figuring that out. Um, that's been uh, that's literally been, been brutally like transparent. Um, that's one of the things. And then b- leadership. Oh my god! <laughs> team mm-hmm. growth. And let's say when things aren't going well, how do you still inspire your team? Uh, how mm-hmm. do you inspire yourself? How do you make sure you're giving energy to everybody so they can do their job? Managing people, managing projects, like it's a lot, man. And it's not yeah. something to learn. You just have to be at the time <laughs> and it's like mm-hmm. stepping into that that was uh that was very interesting it wasn't necessarily a fear but it was a really big hurdle to overcome um in terms of change it was a lot mm, no wow no i love what you said you know kind of being very transparent especially in in your the beginning part of your journey you spoke about kind of fear of growth you know that yes you're doing this business to grow but internally you know, that fear was holding you back. Um, and how it was holding you back practically was that you wasn't doing the, you know, the things, the major things that's going to allow you to grow. And that's how powerful fear is, right? Because what that would do would just prevent you from, you'll be busy doing other things. And it goes back to majoring in the, the, the major things. You'll be doing other things, but the, the very thing that you're meant to be doing to take you to that next level you know, um, is what you're not going to do. And it's about that conscious awareness. And and once you're consciously aware of what's actually going on, then you can start to adjust yourself and face the fear that you're actually going to be going through. In fact, I'm actually going to be doing a a masterclass on that kind of very thing, you know, masterclass on how you can overcome fear. Because you have to understand that when you have a huge goal, when you're, ex- you're excited about that goal because it's what you want, right? This is now, Amara is in a place where she doesn't have a boss. You know, she's gone from, you know, being under employment, being sacked and going through this, you know, crazy time. So you're excited about this goal. But the reason why you're a bit hesitant is because like you said, you've never ventured down this road before. There's no one in front of you saying, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And that very you know, um, uncertainty is what makes you fearful. But once you recognize that these very two things are an indication that you're going in the right direction, that's when you can take massive action towards your goals. Um, but there was one time, Emma, where you was at home and you got a letter. <laughs> you got a letter, you know, and I remember when you're in school, you know, in secondary school and you get a letter and you see, you know, the logo of your school, you start panicking. What is the teacher wrote home saying, you know, you're, you're shaking, but you got a letter and this letter ultimately had the potential to change everything. I want you to talk us through what was it and, you know, what did you do after that? Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, my mom. I was in. I was working in my room with uh, my web guy, and we we're just working. This was proper, you know, bootstrapped at the time. Had no warehouse. Was working out of a storage unit at the time. Um, so 
yeah, my mum held that hand me this letter, and I'm like, what's this? Like, she was she thought it was something like you know, a certificate or something. So she was like, happy. I opened it, and I'm seeing red. I'm seeing destroy. I'm seeing cease and desist. I'm seeing legal action. I'm seeing all these dramatic words, red and underlined, and you know, destroy your web, you know, your domain, revoke. Wow. This. I'm like, what am I reading right now? <laughs> I was wow. like, I don't understand. I had to read it again. I said, oh, basically. And the funny thing is, this person, yeah, is the town over from me. They're in the next town. They're literally 10 minutes away from me, which is so crazy. Um, but yeah, this person, basically, as, as um, the business started to get more successful six months in, I was like, okay, cool. Now it's looking time to trademark, time to make this solid, that kind of thing. So I I, um, I registered for a trademark and the trademark um, for my old name, um, for the old name of the business planted was there because there was a dissolved business that had owned it. And with business, if you dissolve your business, you no longer own what you used to own. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, cool. Like that's gone. Then I got it right. Um, not realizing there was a whole other thing in the background where they had a five, five year period um, where they could like be alerted if anyone's trying to, you know, get that trademark and basically claim it back if they wanted. And this person was still operating. They just some for some weird reason started to operate under uh, themselves, like the person a personal thing. With it was just mm. a whole weird. It was just weird. Like I don't understand what's going on. But anyway, for me, it looked like okay, cool. The name's free. Let's go with the trademark. Then basically when I applied for the trademark, it alerted them and then they were like, mm, what's this? Heard about you. Um, it's all great, you know, your success and everything, but you didn't ask for the name. You can't you can't do this. We own the rights to this name. So that's it. Shut down. <laughs> mm, wow. I was like, what? Um, I immediately called up um my lawyer friends and I was like, hey, because I literally had someone who worked in intellectual property and stuff, like, what's going on? Can you help? Like, what's this? He thought it was nothing crazy because they were in um, skincare, I was in hair. But I was like, hey, like, Planted isn't going to be just skin, like hair. I want to make it a wellness brand. Like, I want to do so many things. And it was like, oh, like, maybe you have to compromise, whatever. I saw the lawyers and they were all like, nah. It's not happening. Like you gotta get rid of this name. Like you gotta it's done. I was wow. like, oh! I was like, oh my days. I couldn't believe it. And this is how many months in? This is one year. One year in. One year in. <laughs> one year in. So I, I, I applied for it six months and basically it was towards the end of the time where people can like say, sorry. Sorry, I'm back. Um, yeah, it, it was um, six months when I applied for it. And it was towards the end of the time where people could, um, people could like revoke what I was trying to do. So literally it was within days and she replied in the right time. And yeah, she basically said I have to shut down the business, rebrand, that kind of thing. She also wanted compensation and money. I was like, no. Okay, so these lawyers need to help me not pay her a dime. <laughs> and at least, oh, sorry. <laughs> Gosh. What's going on? Sorry. Yeah, lot, I don't want to pay her a dime. So we need to figure this out, essentially. So basically, yeah, um, I had to shut the business down. I basically told all my customers, hey guys, I'm so sorry. I can't do wow. it. Yeah, like we can't keep this name. I tried to fight it, but the lawyers weren't having it. So, yeah, I got to let it go. And I just couldn't think of another name for the life of me. I just couldn't think of another name. I was just so stuck on the name. But, yeah, the funny thing is, I actually came up with a new name whilst I was in court. So I was in court for myself. I was on, I was on jury duty. And I wow. was in the middle of a course. And you, can you imagine? I was in jury duty during this time. I'm like, why did you not send me this right now? Like, oh my God. 
it was such a bad time. I was like, I need to sort this business out. And you guys, are, and we just moved into our warehouse as well. So there's so many things happening. Signed a two and a half year lease, money down for a warehouse. And I'm, my name's changing. Like the business wow. <laughs> erupting before my eyes. It's insane. That's crazy. Talk, talk about, you know, a major setback, you know, um, you know, so throughout throughout the the, the 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 journey, was there any time where you wanted to walk away from it all and say, you know what, you know, I've done what I needed to do, you know, I, I've proven that I can do it. I'm just gonna walk away. Was there any any time when you ever thought like that? Uh, I basically nah. It, it just wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> I knew the impact that the business had, and I was like, "This, there's no way." I, it was, it was, it was hard though. It was hard to, like, when it first happened, f first few weeks, trying to think of a new name. I was just so blocked. Like, I was just like, I don't know what to do. It was such a dramatic thing, and I was like, "How, how do people revert to like?" Because I knew the repercussions as well. I knew that people couldn't find us. Mm. We wouldn't be able to find us at some point. We can't use the old name to market the new name. So we, we still had our, you know, the community people on our wait list, but just a name change alone really just messes with people. People just stuck to a name and we'd created all of that buzz and we had articles and we had press and we had this and that and so much and influencers and all of this content that like we'd built such a big brand so fast. It was like, how can I let go of this? I was the doubt. So it wasn't about giving up. It was more like, how do I move forward? Mmm. Mmm. That sort of resilience. You know, like you have gone through so much to get to this point. You didn't look at this as, how am I going to let go? But how am I going to get through this? And I think yeah. that's a word to a lot of people. You know, I don't know what a lot of people are going through right now. But don't look at it like, you know, am I going to give up? But ask yourself, what type of person is it going to take for me to become, for me to get through this winter? Because business and life is like seasons. After winter comes the spring. The spring will come. So you just have to endure. And my oh my, did you endure. My oh my, did you bust through. And it's been just incredible because like you said, five months in, six figures, a year in, seven figures <sighs> in a business. Absolutely incredible. Now, a question I want to ask you is, what does your support system look like right now? Um, and how did you go by assembling it? So your support system, what does that look like right now? So I've got other founders I look to... Um... Look, the thing is, looking at founders alone is fine for me. Like, it gives me energy. Um, I call them my silent mentors. They don't know who I am. They have never heard of me in my life. But what they say, like, there's just people in the in the industry talking about what's happening and giving validation to certain things. So if there's any issues that's going on, it's like, it's not just you, it's other people. You just need to figure it out for yourself, like other people are. So there's those things that really help. Um, just the industry side of things personally friends so i have business friends as well going through similar things so we can have chats on that and it can yeah it's just like probably the most if anyone's gonna get it it's them if anyone's gonna get it it's them they're the ones who are in the trenches as well so they're gonna understand mm -hmm. um and then for my family my family are just extremely supportive they they're like this ain't going either so <laughs> even if i was to say i quit they'd be like absolutely not um you have my friend get into the, the lab get back to the factory get back and make this work because yeah i i need something to brag about okay i'm part of this as much as you are so let's get it um so yeah the fact that i have people uh, my family they love what i'm doing um my friends they're so supportive and my business friends they're in the trenches with me and then my silent mentors giving me the tea and giving me the the knowledge from top it's just like yeah that's that's all that keeps me going because to be honest like it's like what more do you need and then obviously the peace is from god um 
because sometimes peace peace is it's priceless um especially mm. like the hardest times but just knowing that like things are going to work out um regardless and to be honest um outside of business um outside of business it's the spiritual aspect of this game as well so it's a mindset um a lot of mm. people i was actually going to ask you what role does yeah. faith play in business and success oh a huge the funny thing is if you can't if you don't even believe you can do it you're never gonna get anywhere um if you generally don't have confidence in yourself you don't believe what you can do you can't go anywhere so this is outside of just like you know christianity or whatnot it's, there's a lot of faiths out there but literally faith in yourself and mindset is is the only reason why you're here like the only like the, the results that you have in your life is is sometimes it's circumstantial but at the end of the day it's it's not about what happens to us it's about how we deal with it so obviously i was fired and i know my life could look a very different way if i didn't act how i did and if basically if i wasn't delusional and hey i can turn this around i would not have turned it around um and there's just times where you're so low that you just have to be delusional and be faithful faith your way out of it <laughs> mm. out dark moments, basically so um yeah and th- that will be for the like the the tough moments but when it's good you have to also it's, you don't have to f- faith your way out of it but you have to hold on to those confirmations so when things are good you have to hold on to them and be like okay cool let that push you forward essentially so there's always something to learn with whatever you're going through Mm, wow wow that's powerful i mean your story is absolutely in- inspiring you know what you've been able to do in such a short space of time you know like i say to most people i speak to you know may- many may see this as a 12 18 month two-year journey but this journey has been longer than that you know this journey has been from when you you know wanted to be a doctor um, from when you, you know, went into work, you know, working any job that you could um, to just to be able to keep your head above water, you know, going into starting a business in marketing, saying, you know what, I'm going to learn my way through this to make it happen. Um, and then literally being in the right place at the right time. You know, many people always talk about luck, but, you know, luck is when opportunity meets somebody who is prepared. And when that first message came, said that I want to buy this, you straight away took, you know, that opportunity and you followed the money. You're like, listen, this person said they want to buy it. Anybody else, you know, is there anyone else that is suffering with this problem? And like you said, you've been able to overcome challenges. You know, that, that cease and desist letter could have taken you out clean. But in fact, it made you even more hungry. Um, so I, in closing, I, mean, I want you to give this audience some food for thought. Um, as we close out today, what words of wisdom can you leave us with? The thing is, like, I'm a testament of, like, wow, people, like, you can really change. <laughs> like, no this from me. Even when I first started in the beginning, people were like, oh, are you still doing that thing? Like, you're doing that thing, like, full time. Like, really? Wow. You're not going to get a job. Like, like, even, you know, close family members were asking, even my friends were asking me. And I'm like, wow, oh, like, you know, don't think I can. Okay, I know you don't see me like this. You don't know me as this. So that doesn't mean I can't do it. So I was like, let me prove you wrong then. Um, and I sure as hell did that. Um, and I think it's about proving you don't always need someone to, you don't need someone to be an enemy in order for you to prove them wrong. But it's almost even proving yourself wrong, the, the, the doubtful part of you or the fearful part of you. Because there's always going to be someone coming after you. If it's not yourself, it's someone else. Because it's because it's a new thing, there's always going to be that like friction in the beginning. So it's about, okay if you believe you can do it okay cool and then you you follow the steps you follow the right steps essentially um as well as that mind is king like mind your mind is going to dictate everything that happens um and how you overlook the situations someone can have done what i've done and be extremely miserable 
someone can be in my situation be grateful you choose you know your outlook on your results um and to be honest for me sometimes i'm like ah oh, you know i'm focusing too much on the negative but the thing is like at the end of the day i need to remember where i've come from and like i had nothing <laughs> so i need to remember that like i and i have to i have to remind myself that so um if you can do this or if you can overcome something you can overcome a lot of things um so yeah it's it's, it's a lot really but yeah you can really change you can really transform into a completely new being and you don't you don't necessarily work your way out of these issues you you be your way out of it so you have to become someone new you have to adopt a new person um you have to transform into a new person and embody that that's how you're going to change your life essentially um so i'd say like fix your mind first and everything will follow wow hey emma <laughs> you don't work your way out of it you be your way out of it you become that person you know what she's saying ladies and gentlemen is that you know there'll be many people you know that you will need to prove wrong but most importantly you will need to prove yourself wrong because the person that you are today has got you the results that you have right now in order for you to get the results that you want you're going to have to say goodbye to this very person and be willing to do what it takes to go to the next level be your way out i'm i'm super proud of you i'm super excited every time i see something around what you're doing it just makes me super excited because you are actually living proof that it is possible if only you believe if only you can faith your way out you know just recently massive congratulations on your pop up shop you know here in the uk it was an absolute success you knocked it right out of the park um so before i let you go what can we expect from the empire <laughs> um well um, a lot to be honest so we're you know changing things up we've got new products coming out we're going into new verticals hair it's been great but there's other things other things i need to fix for myself you know how it goes if i fix them for me then there's someone else who wants it so yeah i'm excited and yeah essentially i want plant made to be a wellness empire you go in you see all your issues, all your worries, this can be solved and plant made. We want to be the answer, essentially. So I can't wait to start building that out. And yeah, just creating insane products, cool branding, and also, yeah, just do things differently. You know, I, 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 there's no rules. The rule is there's no rules. So always find, you'll find something random coming from me or a, a different approach. But yeah, I'm super excited for the future. Excellent I'm guys, ladies and gentlemen, this <laughs> <laughs> this has been an inside job with myself, Michael J, and the CEO and owner of an eight-figure wellness empire plant made. We've heard her story, her story of resilience, her story of being an overcomer, a story of not having a feeling of letting things go but asking herself, what does she have to do and become to get through it? And today what we see is evidence of that. So much so that the BBC themselves done a documentary just to follow her story. And this is only the beginning. Guys, we've spoken about so many things during this life. You know, how fear is able to hold us back from achieving what it is that you want to achieve. That is why on the 5th of September, I'm going to be doing a masterclass helping people to be able to overcome their fear. How do you be fearless in an environment that screams out fear? For those who want to join that masterclass, click the link in my bio. Make sure that you register and it's going to be an absolutely incredible masterclass to help you go to the next level. Amma, thank you so much for coming on this live and we look forward to continue to see, um, you know, the things that you're going to bring out and the person you're going to become to take you to another level. Guys, thank you so much. Take care and God bless. Thanks so much.